I've paid thousands of dollars in courses to learn what you're basically teaching on your podcast for free. What you're putting out there is so valuable. So, you know, I just really want to acknowledge you and I definitely send everyone to your podcast. You were virtually one of the first mentors that I looked up to and started following. You're always one step ahead of the game, so I just wanted to give you kudos and props for that because lots of people are watching, lots of people are learning from it. Tucker and the whole TTM crew, Dan and Chris, thanks so much for your support. I love what you guys do and a huge, huge fan. Having this support's huge, so I'm grateful for that. What's up, everybody out there in listener land? This is episode 256 of the Real Deals Podcast, and I'm back as your host, as always, Tucker Mary here. I want to thank you guys for joining me for another episode. I got a great topic this week, one that uh, is very relevant and one that uh, I've seen a lot of chatter about online. We've been talking about it a lot in our Deal Finders Academy, and I thought, you know what? This will be a great topic. But before we get into what that is, I want to make sure that you guys checked out last week's show. We had Tarl Yarber on from the Pacific Northwest Real Estate Wealth Expo. I think he calls it the big badass one. It's a big mouthful, we'll call that. But the uh, big real estate investing conference that's going to be up in Seattle this next month in April. We'll be there. A number of other DFA members will be there. I think we're actually going to have an entire DFA panel. There's going to be uh, three days. So I think Thursday is going to be kind of a workshop day. Uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop with uh, Justin Silverio, all on direct seller marketing. And um, it'll be his workshop. I'll just be kind of there hanging out and, and kind of helping where I can. Uh, and then Friday will be kind of speaker day. Saturday will be speaker days. And then I think Saturday night is a big VIP dinner. Um, so it should be a really fun time. I'm excited to see a lot of you guys there, hang out, kind of shoot the breeze, have some adult beverages, and uh, just talk real estate and uh, and life, I guess. But we'll have a booth out in the vendor area for the podcast here, and of course, our Driving for Dollars app, and uh, so that'll be kind of ground zero for us. Uh, myself and Dan will be up there, and we'll be hanging out, and it'll be cool to see a lot of you guys. So looking forward to it, and uh, if you want to get more information on what that event is all about, make sure you check out last week's show where Taro kind of dives into uh, what it's going to be and where it's going to be, and of course, what the dates are, which is uh, end of April. Now, this week's show, what are we going to talk about? Well, the topic that I mentioned in the uh, earlier here in the intro is partnerships, and this is something that's come up a lot, and really, as I think back on my career as a real estate investor, I've had a number of different partnerships, and most of them have been project by project, or we've done a block of projects together as partners. I haven't done a partnership deal in a long time now, I'll be honest with you. And the reason being is because I just have found that I don't particularly love partnerships uh, for a variety of reasons. Now, that's not to say the partnerships aren't a good thing. And so I want to dive into, you know, where partnerships should be used if somebody approaches you to do a partnership, maybe how you should set it up uh, in the world of real estate investing, where they make the most sense, and then ultimately where masterminds and coaching kind of play in um, as kind of a replacement mechanism uh, for partnerships because uh, they very much can, and they can be a cheaper version, honestly, uh, at the end of the day compared to what um, you know a partnership would be. So. I really want to dive into that topic. I think uh, there's some really relevant and valuable information that I've learned over the years, um, having gone through a number of uh, partnerships that ultimately didn't work out, not didn't leave them on a bad note, but just they didn't work for a few reasons long term. And uh, I want to kind of put those out there. And that way, if you guys are thinking about doing partnership deals or just partnerships in general, you can think about it before you walk down that path. So that's this week's show. Now, before we get into that, I've got a couple of housekeeping items. Number one is our Driving for Dollars app. If you guys have not downloaded it already, it's a little blue logo. It's in the iTunes store and the Google Play store. It's free to download. You get a five property free trial. And as soon as you download it, you actually get a free seven email sequence, which is basically uh, our free marketing course, which uh, tells you exactly how to take all the information that the app provides, uh, which is skip trace quality data on a variety of different contact points, as well as information about the property and the potential owners themselves. Uh, But more importantly, how to take that contact information and how to run multiple uh, layered marketing campaigns to the owners of the property to get them to essentially contact you and start a conversation about buying the property. 
we just uh, inked a deal today that uh, I'll talk about here in a second that was from a, a recent driving for dollars list but basically the idea is you you know you drive around neighborhoods and you identify properties that are best suited for us as investors to buy and once you pin them in the app it pulls all their contact information from who they are where they live phone number email uh, IP address all kinds of stuff and then you execute that marketing so go download the app it's free to download you get a five property free trial and you get a free marketing course too and uh, it's $34.99 a month and it's unlimited data so that means you can build as many lists as you want so make sure you do that and then also make sure you go like our Facebook page that's where we kind of treat our Facebook messaging uh, on our Facebook page as kind of our help desk platform so if you have any questions issues or challenges Dan runs that on a daily basis and uh, he gets back with you as quickly as we can during business hours so make sure you go like our Facebook page now beyond that I also wanted to mention our deal finders Academy for those of you guys that uh, are a part of it you obviously know what it is or if you've thought about it you know what it is but I wanted to make those of you that maybe were thinking about it or just don't know quite what it is it's our online mastermind group and it's essentially a group of 120 some odd of the best investors from across the country and really just a core group of great people um, like I mentioned uh, earlier in the intro at the uh, big event this next month up in Seattle we're literally gonna have an entire panel of DFA members which is pretty damn cool because I've met a lot of these folks you know three four five years ago now um, and I've got to know them uh, over the course of that time and they're just great people beyond the fact that they're uh, awesome investors but there's really an amazing core group of folks in there and there's just a ton of knowledge there's a, a variety of different asset classes that people invest in um, that are a part of the group from single family to multifamily to commercial to all kinds of stuff and um, you can really tap that uh, collective group and uh, the mindset and the ability to essentially execute on different types of projects and questions and answers and on-demand coaching and everything you could possibly need um, and it's a very very active group so if you're interested in joining us uh, it's only $1.99 a month that's the other thing too we keep it very inexpensive the reason being is because we want as many people to take advantage of it as possible it's like a little less than $2,400 a year and uh, you get on-demand uh, coaching consulting Q&A and ultimately just a great community to be a part of and there's like four and a half years worth of content five years worth of content that uh, you have access to as well webinars posts all kinds of stuff so uh, marketing material you name it and on top of that uh, we can also do a number of different things in terms of pulling lists for you doing skip traces for you at a tremendous value because we take care of those folks that are a part of our DFA so if you're interested reach out to us uh, we've got a few slots available around the country we don't stack people directly on top of each other for competitive advantage reasons uh, but reach out to us if you're interested and uh, Dan will start a conversation with you and we'll see if you're a good fit now, before we get into the main topic for this week's show, let's talk about what's going on with myself and TTM over the course of the past week. First thing is we're inking a new deal today. Uh, as I mentioned here just a couple of minutes ago, we actually got this deal from a driving for dollars list. Uh, we pinned the property within the app and we started executing some marketing to them. And lo and behold, they gave us a call. The reason why they called us is because they are buying a new home but they're selling the one that they're in. And the one that they're in is a little bit funky, uh, needs some repairs, but more importantly, they need cash like now in order to close the purchase of their new home. And so they're willing to trade some equity for ease and speed of transaction. And uh, lo and behold, we got them to uh, agree to what seems to be a, a really, really solid price. And so we're gonna probably close this deal up in about a week's time, um, given everything goes as planned. I don't know, I'll report back next week and let you know. But uh, it's as simple as that, folks. We just, we found a house that should be sold to an investor. We marketed to them and when the time was right on their end and they needed to sell they reached out to us we went and met with them it's actually funny that as we were leaving the house this is the first time uh the individual um the husband uh he hit a gong went dong uh he was big into chinese culture and so he hit a gong which is the first time that's ever happened <laughs> as we left the meeting probably only in portland right uh but uh, it looks like we're gonna put that deal together so we're pretty excited about that it's actually just down the street from our office here so pretty close um, also this week, we're putting out a new episode of Million Dollar Builds, which uh, means we've made some progress on our multi-million dollar uh, new construction project in Dunthorpe. We are at foundation or close to it. So we've got foundation form set, and that means we're going to be pouring foundation here very shortly. So make sure you check out this week's uh, Million Dollar Builds episode, and I go into all of the progress that we've made in terms of setting forms and just the challenges and uh, things that go along with that. So make sure you check it out. I know it's going to be a good episode this week because we were just out the field shooting it this morning and it's a beautiful sunny day here in portland now the last thing that i'll mention is we are officially pending on all of our inventory that is out on the market so 
you know, as we kind of came out of the winter months, it was a little bit slower here in Portland, um, you know, midwinter. And I didn't know which way the market was going to head as we went into spring. Uh, we got the most recent market action report and uh, inventory actually went down. I thought it was going to go up, so we dipped down below three months again. Um, all of our inventory that's out on the market is now officially pending, even um, one of uh, the more challenging projects that we've had to sell for a variety of reasons that uh, were just outside of our control, things that happened that, um, you know, it just sometimes people sell property around you and things happen that, uh, you know, weren't happening previously uh, and it affects the value of your property. And so we had a lot of things like that go on, but uh, we're now pending. So basically what that means is, you know, the market has definitely picked back up. I don't think prices um, are continuing to climb, but if your house is priced reasonably and uh, it's a good product, um, it's definitely selling for full retail. Um, and if you're selling stuff at a deal, we'll call it quote unquote deal for the MLS, uh, stuff is moving really quickly. So people are still out there deal hunting on the MLS and uh, they're paying quite a bit of money for a uh, quasi retail ready product. So the market's picked up as we head into the spring, early summer market. It'll be interesting to see how things continue. But at this point, we've dropped below three months inventory again. And um, I don't see that spiking again anytime soon. So uh, the next few months look to be pretty good sailing. Interest rates are at a good rate or, uh, you know, a good level. And uh, people are definitely buying houses and the market's absorbing stuff here. So we're going to try and turn and burn a few. Uh, we got a couple of projects projects that uh, we'll be putting back out on the market here very shortly. So uh, I'm excited to get those wrapped up. And then of course, we've got our big uh, whopper of a project in Dunthorpe that'll um, be kind of the end cap to our year, uh, which will probably hit the market somewhere around 3 million bucks. So that's what's going on with me and TTM over the course of the past week. So without further ado, let's get into the rest of the show and let's dive into everything that you need to know that I know that I've seen that I have been a part of with partnerships. All right, Real Deals Podcast listeners, I want to talk quickly about our show's sponsor, Iron Bridge Lending. If you guys have not reached out to Iron Bridge already to talk to them about funding some of your upcoming flip projects, I highly encourage you to do so. I've known the owner of Iron Bridge for a very long time. I've personally borrowed millions of dollars from them over the years to do a number of different projects, and I can say without a doubt, they are the best hard money lending company I have ever come across, and that is the reason why they are the sole sponsor of this show. I've had a lot of other companies reach out to me and want to sponsor this show, but I just won't do it. I feel like I need to be genuine in who we have sponsoring the show, and it needs to be somebody that I've personally done a ton of business with. So I personally vouch for their ability to be the best hands down in the world of hard money lending. You won't find better programs, you won't find better terms, and they're lending or will be lending in over 20 states. So chances are, if you're hearing this in whatever state you're in, it's definitely worth it to check out their website, reach out to them, see if they're lending in your state, and if they are, I would absolutely encourage you to do business with them. Another very cool thing to note is that they have a program for most rehabs where you can actually borrow up to 90% of the purchase price. Now, this is given the fact that you are actually buying a deal, which if you're listening to the show, that means you probably are. But if you have an actual deal on the table, they'll fund up to 90% of your purchase price and they'll even give you rehab funds on top of that, which means that it only takes 10% down to get into a project, which is unbelievable in the hard money world. So, do yourself a favor, reach out to Iron Bridge Lending, have a conversation with them, see if they're a good fit for you and for your next project. I can guarantee you that you'll be happy that you did. All right, guys, let's get into the main topic for this week's show, and that is all about partnerships, right? The big P word. It almost should be the F word <laughs> with some sometimes, right? So why should you partner, right? I've had a, you know, I've had a lot of conversations. We had a long thread uh, in our Deal Finders Academy a couple of weeks ago, all about partnerships and kind of why people have or do partner. And this isn't meant to be, a, you know, a rant about don't partner because I think that there are times and places where partnerships are very good things. Um, I just know that the overall partnerships generally don't last in this business, um, more so in the single family side. And when you get into the multifamily side, commercial side, it's a little bit different because you're acquiring you know, larger portfolios, you're buying, you're holding, um, and just the nature of the investment is longer. So uh, the nature of the partnership uh, tends to be longer as well. But on the single family side, which is what I wanna focus on, 
partnerships generally don't last that long. And the reason being is because it's just a high friction business, right? It's high turnover, high friction, high stress, uh, high velocity. And with that comes heightened emotions and heightened problems and heightened challenges. And so there's just a lot of things that you have to deal with. And so think of a partnership as like a very challenging marriage, right? Because, you know, you're basically dealing with a lot of challenges and problems on a daily basis. And so it, you know, you spend as much time or more time with your partner in this business, if you're partnered, uh, than you probably do with your significant other if you're married. And so you have to be able to get along that well, but you also have to be able to um, kind of fill in the gaps in terms of what one person offers, you know, the other person offers things that um, kind of the yin to the yang, right? And so I'll go into all that stuff. But why should you partner? Let's talk about that first, right? Like, why do people feel like they need a partner or why do you need a partner? And some of the biggest reasons out there um, that I have heard or that I've seen or that I've been a part of, uh, is number one is to do bigger projects, right? And this makes sense. This makes a lot of sense because, and I've said this many times to people that I've done private consulting with uh, or in our mastermind groups, in order to kind of get to the next level, to take that next step in your business, sometimes it takes taking a back seat to somebody who knows what they're doing in order to kind of do bigger projects. So for example, right, let's say you're a wholesaler, um, you've gotten very good at generating off-market deals, and maybe you've done a rehab or two, uh, but you want to get into the world of new construction, right? It seems like it's a big leap. There's a lot of things to do. You don't have your contractor's license. You've never selected plans. You know nothing about any of the utility stuff. Like there's just a lot of of, uh, voids in your knowledge base in order to jump into that. So You use your skill set to find a teardown or a lot opportunity, and then you bring that opportunity to somebody who has the construction skill set and maybe the financial skill set to be able to get financing or has internal capital or whatever it is, and you put together some type of partnership where you get to partner with them on that project, and you get to watch it kind of come to fruition. You get to watch it get built out, and you get to learn a lot in the process. Now, this could be a multifamily project, too. It doesn't have to be single family, but you get what I'm saying. So it's basically to do bigger projects, to do things that are different than what you're doing now so that ultimately you can get comfortable comfortable with it. That is a great way to use partnerships in this business. Um, it doesn't mean they have to be long term, but you can go um, you know, project by project and you can use it to do bigger and uh, better things. And so that I think is probably the biggest reason why you should think about doing partnerships in this business. Now, unfortunately, the biggest reason why people do do partnerships in this business is generally money. They think that, um, you know, they got to go find a money partner. And so they take on that money partner and that partner then becomes an equity partner, not a debt partner in, uh, you know, single family flip projects. And so you're giving away half of the profits for somebody to finance the deal, right? Well, in reality, you can go find that money and you can give away a lot less of the profits and keep all of the control. But generally, people will go out and find a partnership because uh, they need money and they feel like that's the easy way to do it. And then they don't have, you know, interest payments. So it alleviates some of that uh, risk, we'll call it, or stress. And that's not necessarily a bad thing if that gets you over the hump. Long term, though, it's just not going to work out because the reality is, is that you know, if you're just bringing somebody on for money, um, you're going to end up doing a lot of the work. If you find the deal, you're doing a lot of the daily babysitting. You're kind of getting the thing to the finish line. And really all they're doing is providing money and a little bit of input. Eventually, you're going to start to resent the money. <laughs> That's just the way that it works because you're going to think that they're just sitting back. They're doing nothing. They, of course, have the money and they're making half the profits. And that's the truth. And that's the reality, and that's why a lot of partnerships that are based on money end up fizzling because the money's not doing a whole lot other than providing money, and you can go replace that money with outside debt and not equity um, where you don't have to give away half the profits. So that's another reason why people choose to do partnerships, and probably the biggest reason ultimately um, why I've seen most investors take on partners. It doesn't mean it's the right thing, but it's the reason why they do. And I understand why they do, but it's generally not a long-term partnership um, if you are taking on a partner for that reason. 
Now, another reason that people take them on is uh, for some camaraderie, some confidence, um, to have somebody there to basically tell you it's going to be okay or help you kind of troubleshoot, deal with the challenges, deal with the problems that are inevitable in any real estate project. And so kind of having that, we'll call it security blanket, right? Your little, <laughs> your little whatever makes you feel warm and fuzzy, right? Having that extra person there to kind of deal with all those challenges, problems, issues with you. A lot of people have a hard time doing that on their own. And so having that person there to help you with that um, is a good thing. And I do think it's a good thing to some extent. The problem with that is, though, is eventually that partnership will wear itself out as well because you'll eventually get comfortable dealing with a lot of those problems and then you don't need that other person to deal with problems that now you're seasoned to deal with. And so ultimately that part, that type of partnership will eventually fall apart, or at least that's what I've seen and that's what I've experienced in my own life. Now, it's not to say that there aren't some out there that have st- stood the test of time and they continue to kind of morph and grow and whatnot. But generally speaking, uh, if you take on a partner for those reasons, uh, eventually those partnerships are going to kind of dissolve, which you know isn't a bad thing. It's just the way it works. It's just kind of the nature of the beast, so to call it. So basically, why do partnerships fizzle, right? Well, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, you eventually resent the money. Um, <laughs> camaraderie and confidence, you only need it to a certain point. Um, to do bigger projects, once you do bigger projects, you don't need people to kind of hold your hand. So, you know, if you take on a partner, you need to really look at, you know, what are the skill sets, right? What does each person bring to the table? Because uh, otherwise, partnerships will fizzle if you don't have kind of a yin to your yang, right? You have to have somebody who, you know, has a completely different set of skill sets or brings something completely different to the table that's valuable, that's equally valuable in order for partnerships to stand the test of time. And the reality is, is that, you know, in real estate, so much of it can be outsourced or different parts of it can be brought in like money and contracting and things like that, that once you get comfortable with the process, you don't necessarily need uh, that person there to hand over half the profits to. And so that's really why at the end of the day, most partnerships uh, end up failing. And of course, you know, as you get into partnerships too, there's differences in opinion on, you know, design and spending and risk tolerance and personality issues, right? There's, there's that as well. Just like within a marriage, you know, you can have personality conflicts and that's the same thing in partnerships. And so those are a lot of the reasons too, why ultimately, um, you know, partnerships fail. And I think, you know, from what I've seen in this business, people tend to get into partnerships way too quickly. Um, and that's not to say that, you know, you can't get into a single deal partnership, um, you know, without giving it, you know, months of thought. Uh, but I'm talking just general partnerships, like on an ongoing basis, right? Like that's where I think, um, you know, people just kind of jump the gun. They, they get into the partnership because they want that camaraderie, that additional confidence that they have in having somebody by their side to kind of help them do these types of projects, or they think now they don't have to worry about the money part of it, you know, or they want to be able to take that next step. And so they set up a company and their partners and they're just moving forward that way. And I just, I don't like that. I don't think that's a great way to do it. So how should you partner, right? Let's talk about that because I've talked about all the reasons why you shouldn't, which there are a number, and but there are also some why you should, which we've kind of sprinkled in there. But how should you partner? And I think that's an important thing as well. So my suggestion, if you're going to partner, make sure that number one, you're doing it for some of the reasons that we talked about previously in order to ultimately help you and your business, because this has got to be self-serving on both sides, right? For both partners. Um, But do it on a project by project basis, right? Do it for that project where if you want to get into multifamily ground up construction, or you want to get into single family new construction, you want to get into rehabbing, bring a deal to somebody who already does those things, partner with them, do a project together, right? The value that you're getting is learning all the skill sets to do that next bigger project. Uh, And the value that they're getting is that maybe they're not as good at marketing and they need additional deal flow and they're willing to split the profits in order to kind of help with their deal flow in a what is currently a very competitive uh, market. So that would be a value exchange that's equal on both sides. You could do it project by project. And that way, at, at whatever point that you guys decide to, you know, hit the fork in the road and go your separate ways, uh, it doesn't have to be like a bad breakup. It can be, you know, very just, you know, high five, nice work. All right, I think we're going to go on our own and do it. And I've had partnerships like this over the past 10 years where we've done a few projects together. And ultimately, we've decided that, you know, just 
we're done. We, there's just no reason to do more projects together. And, uh, you know, we still remain great friends. And um, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and I would suggest that for any of you guys out there in listener land. It's also very easy to exit, right? You, you essentially can exit. If you go project by project, you have your own company. You just have a single project that's owned. Um, maybe it's owned jointly by your company and the other person's company. Maybe it's one LLC that's set up that's owned jointly, but it's paid out uh, individually. Um, it also keeps the financials and the books cleaner, right? If you just do project by project, so you don't have like a company account that you're dumping money in and you're running payroll out of the same account and people have expenses out of the same account, um, that can get messy. That can turn into a much more involved marriage, we'll call it, right? <laughs> a marriage of finances, a marriage of emotions, um, you know, a marriage of responsibilities. And, uh, you know, that is when having a partnership breakup, it can be really, really detrimental to your business. If you keep it project by project, you can have a partnership kind of fizzle out or just kind of end. And it's not really going to be that detrimental to your business because your business will keep humming along. You'll have another company set up. You don't have to, you know, extract all your capital out of this company that you've put together and close bank accounts and do all those things. Um, it's just, it's an easy transition back to doing projects by yourself or in a different way or different types of projects, right? So that's basically my thoughts on partnerships and ultimately what you should keep in mind if you're going to get into one, because, um, you know, I just think people are way too quick to jump into partnerships. Now, the alternative um, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about, but in my opinion, a great alternative to partnerships um, is joining masterminds or coaching programs. I think that is, without a doubt, the best way to get what you're looking for, um, or a lot of what you're looking for. You can't get uh, you know, financing, uh, the money piece you can't, but you can get a lot of the other things by joining masterminds and coaching programs with the right people uh, that kind of fill the knowledge gap that you're looking to fill. And I think, I don't think it gets talked about enough because really at the end of the day, you know, if you're joining a mastermind um, or a coaching program, it's going to cost you money, right? But it's a set fee, right? So you know what you're paying. Um, ideally, you know what you're getting, uh, but you should also know who you're hiring and what you're joining, right? So knowing what type of business you want to build and then going and finding the help to build that type of business from somebody who actually has built that type of business, right? If you want to build a high volume wholesale business, then finding somebody who's built a high volume wholesale business um, and doing some uh, consulting or coaching with them is probably a great way to go. If you want to get into development, building, um, you know, remodels, things like that, finding somebody that does that very, very well uh, is the way to go. Or if you want to have kind of, um, you know, be a part of a mastermind group where people do a lot of different things that you can get input on, um, then joining a mastermind group is a good thing to do. But at the end of the day, it's a set fee. You know what you're going to expend it's easy to exit, but you can still get a lot of those knowledge things that you would get from a partnership. You can also get a lot of the camaraderie um, and the confidence and the support that you would get with a partnership. And so it's just an easier way to do it. Um, and you still retain 100% control of your company. So that's why I think that, um, you know, really looking at coaching programs, looking at mastermind groups, joining them is a great thing in lieu of actually taking on partners. Um, now, there are times when partnerships are good, like we talked about, but think about it, you know, where one can almost kind of replace the other in a lot of cases. Um, and I just, you know, nobody really talks about that, but it's something to think about. If you're going to, you know, do a project and you're going to make $50,000 or $30,000, let us just say it's a $30,000 rehab, right? You do a rehab, you sell it, you make 30 grand, you split it up, it's 15 grand a piece, right? So basically you're giving away $15,000 to partner or you could join a mastermind group or you could join a coaching program for probably, you know, it depends on which one you join. Some are going to be a lot more than that, but some are going to be a lot less than that. Um, you can join one of those to get a lot of the same things. Now, you can't get the funding, um, you know, if you're taking on a, uh, an equity partner for just all the capital, but you can get all the other things. And um, that is where... I think that, um, you know, a lot of people just don't think about it. And if you need money, then you can probably use the resources from your coaching program, your mastermind in order to find money uh, in order to fund the deal without having to give away 50% of the profit just to get capital. So those are my thoughts on partnerships, kind of what I've seen, what I've experienced over the last 10 years. And um, ultimately, you know, in summation, at the end of the day, 
I have seen very few partnerships last the, the test of time. The only ones that seem to last longer are in the world of multifamily and commercial where people are building out a portfolio because like I said, the nature of the asset is a longer term hold. And so everybody is basically buying long term assets. So it's easier to have a longer term partnership. But in the world of single family investing, I have not seen many partnerships last the test of time. There are a few out there, but the reality is is that most kind of uh, go their separate ways after a year or two, maybe three, doing business together because of a lot of the points that I made earlier in this conversation, or this one-sided conversation, I'd say, me talking to you guys. So think about all those things that I said, and uh, if somebody approaches you about you know, doing a partnership or you're thinking about uh, doing a partnership, really look at it on a project by project basis and go from there. That's what I would suggest. And uh, just keep in mind all of the different reasons why people partner and maybe what you can kind of sub out, right? And uh, maybe you can join a mastermind, join a coaching program. Um, You can do a project by project type partnership. You can do the things that are needed in order to kind of help get you to that next level without getting in the middle of some messy stuff if it falls apart. So hopefully you guys can take something from my experience and uh, what I've seen over the last 10 years. And uh, if you're going to do partnerships, make sure you do them the right way. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this week's episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and uh, you can take a lot from uh, um, all everything that I've experienced about partnerships, which uh, is a lot over the last years. So I've worked with a lot of characters. I've worked with a lot of good people. Uh, but at the end of the day, I've remained on good terms with um, everybody that we have worked with. And so I've been able to, um, I guess, unweave some webs that uh, ultimately needed to be unweaved, uh, but do it in a way where everybody's still friends. And I think that's a big success and uh, a test to, I guess, what I might have said earlier in the show, which is uh, how to partner properly. Now, before I get out of here for this week, I've got a closing success quote for you. And uh, many of you guys that know me know that uh, I often refer to partnerships as sinking ships, uh, eventually anyway. Uh, But uh, this week's closing success quote is a a quote that has that in it. So it's by an individual, I don't even know who made this up really, but it's a good quote, so I'm going to say it. If your business partners aren't working as hard as you are, it's not a partnership, it's a sinking ship. And eventually, that tends to be the case. (laughs) That's why most partnerships don't work out. All right, guys, that wraps up this episode of the Real Deals Podcast. I'll see you all next week. Thank you.